Okay, finally it is finished and I really worked my ass off with this. The textures and everything, I really went in with all of my skill and I hit my skill wall many many times and I still do so I'm gonna make some more of these I have actually some photos I actually painted this one on there you said that in the beginning of this video anyway um, uh, it's really great to see that it turned out quite well uh, it's one of my uh, patron. It's actually the patron painting for December, so I'm a little off schedule. But when it becomes finished, it's good, and uh, some happy patron will win that painting. So, with this, uh, I will ask you, of course, to become a patron, support my channel. But it also different ways to do it. If you can't have any money or you don't want it, you give them a thumbs up. You share them on social media, you leave a comment, put it into your playlists, and uh, yeah, uh, just watch my videos, even if you don't look at them, just let them play to bring up my view time, and uh, yeah, there are many ways to support me. So, you also find me on Facebook if you want to engage with me personally. But first, you have to be a patron. Okay, thank you, and until next time... Stay cool, and I give you flower painting, white flower, yeah. Okay, I am going to paint this. Uh, this is a photo I took of some roses uh, a few years ago. And I had them on my computer, I haven't done so much with them. And I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to paint it on this canvas, in this tutorial and um, I got this question from a woman I think on YouTube if I could show the motif this uh, at the same time I painted and I can I'm gonna try to well now you see it anyway so I'm gonna see if I can get it into the video anyway uh, keep watching and stay cool okay so here we go, rose, white rose, um, you count one, it's got a one and a half, and it's like one and a half, and one approximately, I put it in the middle, I like it to be in center. The thing with doing it like this is that you get this direct communication between your brain and your uh, if you have it on the side, like a still life, you kind of have to travel longer between the motif and the painting. Here you, it's more direct. Uh, um, it gets closer to, to the... It's not like having a... Uh, projector or something like that, but it, it kind of gives you the uh, your eyes can project it better. And it's like I've seen some people using their iPad, and I wouldn't recommend that. I tried it once and I was just confusing. And maybe that is because of my habits. Uh, I just place this. And I count one, that was too big. It's very typical for me to make things bigger for some reason. Maybe my brain and my, my personality traits that come through. Um, anyway, um, I would recommend getting a good, good uh, printer taking good photos if you want to, as a painter, it would be a good thing to become relatively good at photo taking photographs, that you take photographs 
thinking about them as potential paintings when you do. Thinking the lines and the everything. I have taken a lot of nice photos with my uh, Pentax camera and these two are taken with uh, film and it shows because they are given a totally different um, a totally different hue in a way with depth so there's something something with the analog that gives it more I don't know it's like uh, some, well, there's something with the texture or the color depth, or there's something with it that is more natural. I feel anyway. Uh, and if you use, uh, like I have done, my RC Pentax six seven camera with the six seven tungsten film, it really becomes beautiful. Sadly, they do not make. The film I use anymore, but I have some in my fridge. So, I'm gonna. Okay, anyway, I have uh, basically enough photographs to last for the rest of my life now, anyway. But it's always nice to take some new photos of models and stuff. I can't paint everything during this lifetime, sadly. And um, that is just a brute fact. So I have to live healthy and try to prolong my suffering as long as I can so I can get the most out of it. Yes, it's suffering. <laughs> Life is suffering. In a way, it's suffering. Every day, some suffering. Being conscious is quite stressful. You see, when I paint, I just, I go in there and I look at the motif and I put in points, reference points, reference points, reference points. And I, it's almost like I, I put things into a partition, I think in partitions. That's how I feel anyway. I don't know how it is and this should be closer. You see, that's the kind of mistakes you do when you um, don't use a projector. Uh, this is closer to close. And uh, yeah, because of the, uh, there's this leaf coming in from the side here this flower but all this the thing with the painting is that I keep on adjusting 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 and adjusting 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 I'm gonna see this in this because maybe it's a good thing that you now see what I do actually I have 32 32 think about it 32 different roses flowers and I'm going to pick the best of them when I paint a series. So I always do, do stuff like this. Every month I can paint a new one. I should paint a self-portrait every month. I should paint my big figure paintings. I should paint all the still lives and the big, bigger still lives with craniums and uh, all the time. It's, it's, this is what I. That's what I'm going to do. Um, get things into a, where everything, every road leads to. Paint. For a few years now, because of some personal stuff, I've been in a kind of a low the low end of life is that what you're talking and um, I had a drop in my tyroxine levels and 
hormone levels. Um, but I did some changes and I'm starting to feel better. And uh, that is also if you if you if you have some if you are the type who are a little bit depressed or so be careful with the kind of people you surround yourself with. Be careful with alcohol. Be careful with the food you eat. Make sure to exercise. And make sure to try to get all roads to lead to the thing you love. And for me, it is painting. My parents, my daughter, my brother, my life, myself, and my painting, and a few friends, and of course living. So that is how it is. And, uh, I guess I stressed too much for too long, and I had this, yeah, it was a, it was a long story. And suddenly the light just went, and um, and I didn't even realize it because I'm so used to have this high energy drive, and suddenly nothing that used to work worked anymore, and. Uh, Nothing actually felt good. It's almost like somebody turned off the motivation in my brain. And uh, it took years to come back to it, to changes. Maybe I'll talk about a few things that triggered it in our time. It was a lot of things actually. It was one particular, I can say, one particular thing was, uh, yeah, basically falling in love with the wrong girl. Uh, and um, before that, having a lot of relationships that didn't go anywhere. And, uh, Rest with painting, too much training, too much of everything. Maybe at times too much partying, and sugar, and boom! At the age of 45, the lights went out. But I also became a better painter from it and a deeper person. So everything has its own silver lining. When you come out of it, introspection has grown and you see the world from a, in a different light. I thought I was very conscious and very... Um, that I had uh, some kind of understanding of everything in me. Or I was in a way wrong. And you need sometimes you need a, a period of depression or anhedonia to kind of realize it and see it. And then I got my fucking arthritis in my hips. So I was in constant pain. So, some days are worse than others. If I do the right thing, eat the right stuff, do yoga, been training martial arts for since I was like 13, 12, 13 years old. And uh, too much training, so I ruined my college. But I didn't get the full long symptoms before 
I got the Tillich syndrome and the depression. That was when it actually started to kick in, it's like a trigger. And that's quite amazing. And now, I probably need to get new hips. I least have one of them and then another one. So that's the status of my life right now. So if you are an artist, that is so important because if you if you get in go into depression and I'm not the kind of guy who use any medicine. I know how the brain works and uh, I know what to do to get out of it, how to exercise and how. But it's very important as an artist because many artists are very, well, we are often hyperactive. I am, we are hyperactive. We are, our emotions are very often basically a little bit out of sync all the time. And um, as you get older, you don't can't take that much, or you kind of the sum of all cuts in a way that in the end will take you down. And uh, I think that is what happened to me. In the end, it was too many cuts. It's like the old Chinese torture method called death by a thousand cuts, at some point, uh, well, what they did there was that they had people who knew the human anatomy and they had uh, execution or torture method called death by a thousand cuts and um, they cut into all the nerves, so maximum pain but not death until basically a thousand cuts. And in another way, if you live, if you burn, as Christopher Hitchens did say before he died, I burned a candle in both hands and gave a lovely light, and then he died from esophageal cancer. Um, if it burns too bright, you can also burn out too early, and, um, yeah. because everything you do wrong will leave its mark, and in the end, it just fucks with your whole system, and it says goodbye. So, if you're an artist. So from an artist to an artist, stay healthy, do exercise, and if you go, if you become depressed or you can't work, force yourself, because when you force yourself to work, the brain is connecting, brain cell, uh, connecting synapses related to what you do. So every time you manage to start painting, it's going to be easier and easier and easier. And in the end, you're going to get back into the flow. And that is where you want to be, because the flow uh, from doing what you love will then strengthen the immune system. It will start healing. The depression and boom you feel incredibly much better and if it wasn't for my arthritis pain now which comes and goes I used to be flexible as a ballet dancer so it's so annoying now not to be able to kick as high and train as hard and stuff but I'm gonna go and get back to it so. I, I kind of outspoke myself there for some kind of digression so that I didn't remember what I was going to say. 
I'm sorry to talk about these things when I paint here, but I think it's very important. It's, it's actually as important as being conscious about yourself, knowing yourself, having an objective standard, trying to be honest, is to, to become a better painter. It is as almost as important as learning the skill because it's gonna kind of shine the honesty uh, will at some point start shining through in your paintings so a lot of good painters out there but you can't really see the person where is the person and then you have a few and people tell me there's a lot of personality in my paintings. It's hard for me to judge my own painting, of course, because I'm subjective. Uh, but um, I do see now, I'm starting to see, I wasn't able to before, I'm starting to see that my honesty as a person is now shining true in my paintings. I paint in an honest way and it's not often I say something good about myself but I'm gonna give myself this much, much credit. My paintings are honest. And here yeah, direct, no bullshit. I think honesty is that intellectual, emotional, self-criticism is extremely important. And there you go. See? Boom! Sketch. Wasn't that hard, was it? Hmm. And I talked about life and everything. 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna stop for. Yeah. Okay, just gonna continue. I just need some new colors and stuff. I'm gonna add some uh, into the rose here. The rose is basically, you know, this is. This, this painting is quite kept down, uh, it isn't, but there's a lot of light here, but it's in the, in the shall we say, in the um, uh, cold, it's quite a cold hue to it. But when I look closer, I can find different colors in, in it. And when it comes to light, I think it's all about how you put colors. Of course, it's light and dark, but how you put the colors uh, in relation to one another, who determines if it's going to be good or bad, if it's going to feel real or not. So, and the textures also, of course, is extremely important. So, it's not going to be a perfect sketch. I don't need to have it to be a perfect sketch. I just want it to be a kind of a work, something to work with in the next level. So I try to put in the main things. It's, it's, there was a, there's a guy who one of my patrons who said that I, it looks so effortless when I paint and at this point uh, when I do sketch it is quite effortless it's quite easy to create something that feels nice um, it's very spontaneous it's very open sketchy, exciting, 
and then it becomes more and more difficult to keep you goal. So yeah. Oh, the peace I get from painting is just amazing. It's such a peace. It's I wish I wish people would unpretentious as a don't be a as a some some artists are so pretentious. And I can't really see the love in what they do or the they say it's all about sh showing off. But if you find this this personal thing, when it becomes personal, when it is you are interacting with with yourself on this honest level, it's just amazing the feeling of uh, connection to both yourself and the canvas and thoughts and everything. Thoughts are just flowing. When I paint, when I'm not having a camera on, I just flow. I put on some music, it can be classical music, it can be trance music, it can be pop music, it can be Coldplay or Rammstein or it can be any any type of music that has some balls. I put on Cure, you, you too even, I think, I think uh, Bono is kind of like pretentious prick, but I don't know, I don't know him, probably, maybe, he's probably a nice guy, it's just a little bit, shall we say, yeah, punks, so what, <laughs> not in that way. Uh, anyway, I love their music, uh, great music. And when you play music and you get into this dance, this music, feedback, and it just comes, it's just, oh, yeah. And it is actually tested that it is very good for the immune system. So is losing weight, which I've also done because of my hormones. Uh, and I was actually 84 kilos. Am I, I'm 172 high, so I'm not tall. It doesn't matter, I have a big ego, so that compensates. It's like they say about small people, beware of small people, as a Hitler, Stalin, <laughs> Pol Pot, and Napoleon, they're all small people, so we don't have small people. Anyway, um, yeah, that was a digression, I guess. I keep forgetting what I was talking about. <laughs> Anyway, um, as I was talking about the connection, um, connection and meaning, actually meaning also, uh, it gives a sense of meaning. The times when I can't work properly, it really It feels like shit. So my mom, my mother, my mummy, my great love, mother, she uh, tells me, oh, you work so hard, you're going to burn yourself out and stuff. And I always tell her that it isn't the work that wears me down. It is when I can't work that wears me down. It is when I... I kind of 
start losing time, not being able to find peace, not being able to start up. I start to train too much, start watching porn, stupid TV series, and all the negative shit that is out there. I start doing that. Instead, I even train too much, so I wear myself down. When the distractions takes over, that is when I get depressed. I've never was depressed because I have done a good piece of work. Never. It is when I can't get there. That is when I get depressed. So when I really work well, and um, if I make something work well, it's like I bring that good feeling with me to the next day. And I guess the task now is to keep that feeling alive as much as I can for the rest of my existence. Yeah, I was talking about weight. I lost, uh, I lost almost 10 kilos of body fat. It wasn't that I was fat fat, but I had too much inner fat, like visceral fat, which also creates inflammation in the body. And I um, had probably too much cortisol uh, or too much inflammation. So I cut out most of my carbs. Cut up milk, not because I don't like milk, but because there's too much sugar in it. And I went into keto, started on doing keto, intermittent fasting. And what happened was just amazing. What happened to my mood and my flow. My blood sugar isn't going up and down like this all the time. And um, I'm just feeling great. I eat a little bit of fruit, a lot of vegetables, nuts, eggs and fish and meat and everything. But I usually only eat one bigger meal a day, one main meal, and um, I take some um, some protein shake um, because of the training and um, uh, collagen, beef, collagen, uh, grass fed for my hips and my cartilage. Stuff and um, I don't even feel hungry anymore. I always went up when I was trying to eat like five times a day because when you train you have to eat like five times a day. I was just exhausting by eating and I was restless and my stomach was full of food. And I tried to eat every healthy thing every single day, and you can't eat every healthy thing every fucking day. Because it's too much food. Even if it's not high calorie food, it's just too much food. And it will lead to inflammation of the gut and inflammation in the whole body. So I went into, I have a window 12 or 16 hours a day where I don't eat anything. And it works perfectly. My muscle mass is strong. My uh, energy level has gone up, my hormones are st stabilized and perfect, so it works. Okay, I talk about health, and I should talk about painting, because that's why I'm watching. I hope you learned something anyway from this. Uh, Yeah, that is... There was this... Ask me why I give this away for free. Why, why not make some DVDs to sell them or whatever. First of all, I don't think there would be any big market for it, but that is one thing. 
Secondly, I, I kind of like the feeling or the, the, to, know, to know that I actually help people. I'll help people start painting again. They told me that I was their inspiration. And um, yeah, it gives me great pleasure knowing that I helped people. Even with some of my rants, some people actually even like when I talk about life and stuff like that. And if I touch a few people, my channel isn't a big hit, I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, my videos are long and they're me talking about stuff. Um, but it's growing slowly, and I'm pleased with it. So. But it's nice to give, nice to give people. Of course, I, it makes me very happy when somebody adds himself on Patreon or give a donation or, or something like that because I have expenses too. And it's like showing appreciation for all the work I put in to the videos. But yeah. So despite that I like to give People. I also like people when people give back. But also a nice comment and a thank you note and a, in the comment section under the video is very appreciated also. As I say, if you can afford it, don't be shy and donate a little bit or become a patron. So you can also win a painting. This is a Patreon painting actually. It's going to be in my Patreon lottery for December. And it's going to make one of my fans happy. Yeah. You see now how I just move the stuff around, it becomes closer and closer and closer. And, uh, yeah. Don't ask me how much time it takes me to paint this. Because this doesn't take much time. As you see, I have painted a whole process. Uh, it takes time is when I start to uh, go in to the deep, where the real problems are. Mm. Yeah. I will also make some new videos. Uh, I'm gonna make a, a full instruction video of everything from how I uh, ground the canvas, how I mix the medium I use, what I use, what colors I use, what pencils I use how to use the palette, how to use the medium, uh, how, 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 and combine it with a, with a small painting so you can actually see. So every time somebody asks how I do something, I will just post that video. If you want me to help you become a better painter, you 
have to become a patron if you want me to interact with your painting and answer more complex questions. Um, you have to become a patron. And it's not expensive, it's like only five dollars a month. And um, you can also win a small painting like this every month. In December now, hopefully I will have the last lottery for this year. And um, next year I will do one each month. I'm a little bit out of sync now when it comes to time and stuff. See now I'm starting to build textures. Starting to Yeah, I will talk a little bit. There was this Danish Guys, very good painter. He also is a patron, and you probably won't see this video. And he was asking me about. He had made a very nice um, sketch, I would call it, of the family. It's very difficult because people were smiling and there were teeth and everything, and I just can't stand. I would never do it because it's too hard to get the smile. But he he is kind of a um, Velasquez maybe painter. It's very dissolved and all the textures are in a way the same and he asked me and and the thing I tried to explain to him is that this wall has one feel to it okay this is a, a concrete wall it's from my other studio and a concrete wall doesn't have the same texture as a flower or leaf, or this is a wood with paint on it and stuff. And as you as you paint, as you keep on building, now everything is kind of the same texture because it's a first sketch. So I try to build some textures, uh, but I I I can't go. I can't get in all the textures the first time because that is a piling on process like like building a sculpture in clay uh, what I try to uh, the thing he should do is start painting over and over and over until the rose feels like the rose and the wall feels like the wall and it all are in all the small details all the small textures of course it doesn't have to be perfect I don't say that but you have to try to uh, not make all the objects in the motif have the same structure and paint uh, and um, texture and in combination with the colors differences in color it will start to feel more and more real as you go along uh, this Danish person he is very good but he kind of stops when I think it should actually begin and um, when you start destroying the nice things that is in the sketch and you have to paint over that is when you will run into the real problems because then your skill wall will hit you in the face like <laughs> yeah. if I could stay on this stage and just twinkle a little bit even lighter with it make it like a perfect sketch uh, I actually did one I just one video on my YouTube channel where I paint roses in like eight, uh, well, basically ten hours. I think it was like eight. I finished the painting in basically ten hours. I think it was all together. Uh, I did that. I I went in and I draw everything 
quite perfectly, quite slowly, to, because I only had one go on it. And it was, became a, quite a sketchy painting, but it felt finished. Now this won't feel finished, because I haven't even tried to make it feel finished. I just tried to get the gazelle in, or the, the, the beginning the basis for all what comes later. And that's why it's called a gazelle, or something like that. I think it was gazelle I read somewhere. Anyway, if somebody can correct me, if somebody knows something, if somebody knows something that I don't know, please tell me. Because that's how I learn. I can't know everything. I can always pretend, <laughs> but I don't. So, mm. yes, okay. I think this is a good enough for the first sketch. Um. There's greens, there's yellows, there are so much happening. This. I'm going to paint for a little while without you. Or maybe I shouldn't. I should just let it dry. And uh, just do layer number two. Later. smaller so yeah that is stuff like that I will I will fix later yeah this is gonna be more up there I too, I could go much, probably much further than I do, and that is the plan actually to start to become a mix between Rembrandt and um, Vermeer to get that clarity, and at the same time have the sculptural dimension. That is my goal when it comes to where I would like my paintings to be. That's going to be a struggle for the rest of my life. My only beautiful life. Which sometimes seems so long, and other days seems way too short. The more I work, the more I paint, the more I want to live. And if I should fall in love and find this gorgeous girlfriend with a big but a um, nice smile and some humor to be added to this short existence. I guess I would see that as a bonus. But I can't know that. So, am I? 
as I see it. The last time I really felt love and didn't go anywhere, I do feel that it was the last time, in a way, because I have such trouble giving away my freedom. I need to be drowning to give away my freedom. So the chance for me in the age of 50 and not getting any younger, finding a girl I fall in love with enough to be in a relationship. I think it's extremely small. But time will show. In the meantime, I'm gonna paint and travel and take care of my daughter. She actually takes care of herself and live. And with that, I rest my case, I think. And despite that I was ranting about everything, as I actually every time promises myself not to do. I hope you liked it. Okay. Okay. Layer number two. Some lazo. Lasso. I wonder what a, the name of that actually is. Lasso. Lasseri. In Norway, we call it la sering. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna bother with the with the retouche vernis on this. I'm just gonna go right into it. Like this. So. Now, there's some texture here, and to take away some of the oil, as usual. Just need this. This one, take it away. Scrape it off. So, what I do, as usual, is to go in with the, with the, I start with the light areas, as I always do. Now I have to consider that there are some blue on it, and that's going to be yellow here. So, I need to be a little bit careful. That doesn't become too green. Mm -hmm. Now I can also let the shadows explain some of the flower uh, okay, or the lasur stay as a sh as a shadow. It was a horrible pencil. Um, so I just go in and I do the 
light areas first, like here, and I'll let the shadows stand. Because if you don't have the right tools, you start fucking up and it doesn't become a pretty picture. I bought some new ones. I buy these small packages of Da Vinci. It's kind of more like a studio hobby quality, but they're really brilliant to work with. I love them. I think the re one of the reasons why I like to work with this is, is that I enjoy doing the directions when I build and of course you can also use round, I don't mean that you're not going to use round pencils but it's like it suits me to the way I paint uh, it suits me well, actually. You know, that shape because it gives me the square, more rational, uh, almost a little bit mathematical. Uh, different. It's like it puts the whole thing up in squares, anyway. I don't know. It's just I work in directions, try to figure out which directions everything comes in. Now it looks probably Mistakes behind here. Build, build, build. some green down there. Now there's a lot of blue in this lasso so uh, you see that turn green when I was pushing it into the corner here and then I go in with this one. a little bit more bluish and I that is how you just keep building. Now it was way too green maybe it was actually red I should have had there some cup luck, I'll set in, in the blue to make it more. You know, all this is kind of yellowish and bluish, and um, it's always ish because it's never totally, uh, the colors are never totally clean in a way. Only some you are know, broken against one. Spectrum, yellow, blue. That's why I say you have all the colors of the rainbow in every painting, no matter what, no matter what uh, motif it is. If it's dark, if it's light, it doesn't really matter. You will find the same colors everywhere, but it's the amount and the nuances of the color that matters. So, yeah. Okay. So, maybe one. 
So sometimes I feel like a surgeon, especially when I do faces and start to get deep into it. I start to feel like a plastic surgeon that I'm kind of trying to get all the cuts right so it feels natural and real. It becomes a little bit fatty. I should have had the retouchefanis on first because it makes the oil I put on in the lasur it makes it stick better to the surface. So I noticed this now that it's kind of slippery. So I will recommend first the retouchefanis, let it dry a little bit, a couple of minutes, and then you take the lasur on. And then you let that dry for a little while, 10 minutes maybe, and then you start painting. I didn't do that now, and I have to suffer a little bit from that because I feel that it's too watery, slippery. I will take a while until I then manage to push so much color into it that it starts to feel better. Like I actually can put on more sculptural things. So underneath here, so I see there's some reddish in there, and now we got the yellow and the red. But it's it's really this is this is the thing. You have to kind of teach your eyes to see, and also you can use your intellect because when you know the color circle, if you if you're not sure, you can actually understand what's okay. If it's if it, there are some uh, violet here. There will be some greenish yellowish there. Uh, it has to be actually because it's complementary colors. So The more and more I paint, the more I see, suddenly I see this shadow walls coming down here, underneath here, and it starts to explain stuff, and I see that this has to be up here, and suddenly it starts to fall into place. It's not that I see the whole thing at once, because I don't. I kind of see it, but I don't, but I have to... Um, I have to build it. I might think that people are more that are more classically trained, skilled, maybe sees it in a totally different way. But for me, it is like putting it into different compartments and just build. I have now like three 
almost 4,000 uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel. It's, it grows very slowly, but steadily. What I would wish is that people put the notification button on. So when I put out a new video, take a look at it and help me spread the message. So in the first days I get a lot of views on the video. It's not, not this slow drip drip but uh, it gets a lot of traffic from all my subscribers. You don't have to see the whole video. You can actually just also put it on and let it roll. And you don't even have to look at it. Just do me that favor. Now, if, if I, I do put some commercials in, if it's a long video, I do it like one, every half hour because I want to have some revenue back from it. It's not much, it's like a half a dollar a day, or at best, it's like if I put out a new video, I might come up to a dollar sometimes. But it's kind of drip, 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 and money is money, I guess. But if more went to Patreon and become patrons, I could actually stop doing that. So the videos would be okay. I would have an ad in the beginning and the end, but not all the shit in the middle, because I hate that myself. I actually wonder if I want to buy premium, so I don't have to see all these commercials. Uh, because I'm listening to a lot of science stuff and podcasts and music and stuff. Well, I was starting to become a starting to happen something here. I'm gonna put in some lights underneath there. And some more red in that. And blue. This whole thing is basically in the same and, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Just like that, it goes up here. I think I'm gonna... Yeah, that's wrong. I'm gonna move that up. I think I... Let myself do some small mistakes. I I didn't focus enough, so I made it a little bit bigger. And I wasn't do that because uh, I want to keep it. Is it the right size and the right shape? I start to build out. And I saw that because of these leaves were wrong compared to this. So that's why I love the oil color. Just keep molding. And yeah, it's gonna become pretty nice. Shadows behind there. Also, the background start to explain the shape. So a lot of stuff happening behind there in the photo, as you see. Yeah. 
Es wäre mir mal nicht. It's, it's funny because you might think that you see a, a paint on it and the colors are different there and there and it has something to do also with the, the physical presence of the paint on the canvas are sending out to the camera actually. Uh, a color specter. Actually, when I see this in reality, the colors are more the same. But the camera has problems uh, getting it. Uh, so, just have to live with it, I guess. Leaf. It's a leaf, not a butterfly. <laughs> you see, it's it's kind of too slippery. The paint doesn't stick because I didn't have the little chef on it on first. So I'm not going to do that mistake again. From now on, first get to chef on this, then go over it after that. And now I'm not going to mix them together because it's two different things. If it gets mixed together, it's on the canvas. It would be nice to work with all these subtle, uh, so very subtle. Oh, uh, what uh, Yeah, nuances from the wire, from the foreground to the background. And then uh, you have to think like. Vermeer, when he went in with a very subtle, I'm going to do some close ups later when I come to this deeper point. And right now, it's still just over paint and not so much detail. When I get into real detail, I'm going to start doing, showing you how I use round pencils to just get these beautiful, almost watercolorish nuances to start creating the subtle feeling that I'm after. Also going to do a small portrait soon. How to make a portrait. Just to uh, and maybe a little bit bigger uh, but not so so you can actually see me working with the photo and everything. Maybe that will be interesting for you. So you can see the motif at the same time. I can't do that with a still lifes because then I need two cameras and that is just too stressful. If I knew I would get a million views, okay. But life is short and I only have so much time my hands and I can't spend that much time with doing the video, you know, red, making videos. Uh, as if I earn more money on it, I would, but I don't, so. Everybody wants free stuff. And that's what I'm giving you. It's almost like stripping for free. <laughs> if I was a girl, they would 
be like watching webcams without without paying. And that is quite nasty actually, these poor girls, I don't watch it myself, or of course I've seen it, but these poor girls are, I think it's sad when girls are thrown away there. Only life on using dildos on webcams. But it's even more sad to watch it and not pay for it because that is stealing and um, that is not nice. I'm, I'm not asking you to, to pay me, of course. I'm doing this because I like making the videos also. And I also like, like giving people help to paint. But I, it's like, it do make me happy, very happy when people, some people donate or so. And even make a comment, tell me what you think, even if it's negative, it's, if it's done in a, in, I'm not, I don't really care much about this respect thing. But if it's only bullshit, you know, somebody throws, oh, you're such a bad painter, and say, okay, whatever. Yeah, some people think that or something. But if you have some really good arguments and you you know things that I don't, but the techniques I use, maybe you know something about the how the long term, how it long term will affect my paintings or something, I would be uh, glad to learn new things. I love learning, so learning is my hobby. I that's why. I also love conversation and to have deep conversations about everything like the brain or the body or the universe or existence or philosophy you have to history you have to you have to know a little bit about everything I'm not claiming to be an expert at anything of course I'm not I just teach myself the basics so I have a kind of an idea of what they are talking about and it's the same thing with painting I mean I've learned I haven't learned to paint by watching watching videos of painters telling me how they paint I taught myself this by failing and, and uh, learning from my mistakes but I do learn by looking at other people's paintings I like Rembrandt and stuff, and of course, some knowledge you need, you know, about colors and mediums and how to use the different types of gesso or groundings. But I'm not actually going to other painters to learn how to paint. But I do like advice anyway, because I, suddenly I can learn something from, from people. And I also learn, I actually learn a lot from talking to this camera. And becoming more conscious of what I'm doing. And I actually told that to my father the other day, that, that I, uh, it has some benefits. Become more conscious, and also I get to practice my English. Uh, I don't know how it is. I think my English is good enough to be understood. And my daughter, it's funny. My daughter always because I'm I'm a little bit dyslectic, and uh, I never actually learned the grammar. I just learned English by listening, talking, and I do have a. Kind of a perfect pitch. I can pick up rhythms and sounds and repeat them quite well. I almost drove people crazy when I was a kid running around and and uh, imitating birds and animals. And, uh, you know, I was on a boat with my father when he was a sailor, and there was this cook on board that I was <laughs> all day. Because I was cooking food, and I was a foodaholic, really liked eating. 
and um, I was making sounds all the time. And I told my father, oh, I have to take this kid away, it's a nice kid, but he's driving me crazy <laughs> making all these noises all day. <laughs> It's almost like I remember it. Five years old. Standing on the bridge looking at New York for the first time. With my dad. Hmm. So it gives me a lump in my throat. It's almost like my mother is now. 73, yeah, 73, I think. Yeah, 72, 73. I should have known that, I know. And my father just became 80. Yeah, that means she is 73 because there's seven kids different. Um, and um, she looks much younger, though. But, um, you know, I'm gonna lose them. It's not that far into the future, and it is almost like I fear the funeral more than anything. It's almost like I fear my parents' death more than my own. Because I know the pain. I can, I can feel the pain when I'm talking about it. I'm, I'm lumping up my throat, actually. Huh. My own death? Psh, fuck it. You know, that's on my schedule. So, I've gotten a little bit further to this. And, uh, yeah. My camera stopped when I said death is on my schedule and there's nothing actually to think about. Anyway, uh, I have been doing some more work. This is the second layer and I keep on building the textures and I keep on building the groundwork for the next layer and kind of what I do is that my brushwork will continue to get smaller and smaller and at um, different um, sm different textures will start emerging new layer so yeah <clears throat> it's quite uh, much darker there than, but when I see it in reality the difference isn't so big and I was talking about that that um, the camera do actually pick up the colors in the paint differently than uh, in the print. That is quite frustrating actually. Uh, because I wish you could see the actual colors. It is approximately, so I guess it should, should just be. some food because blood sugar is low mm -hmm. see. there is a limited to how much I I can put on today
don't think there is any use to put in more paint on it now because it has in Norway we call it metningspunkt it's like uh, if you look at the paint as food the painting is full you know I can't really get any more paint to stick on it uh, I can hold very light pressure on my brush and that way I can get more paint into it as you see now but I can't actually push any more paint into it if you get my point um, and one has to ask why I put on more than today. So we point to it. I will just give it a little bit more bang. Here to a little bit more sculpt it a little bit more. So I have more to build on next time. There's a lot of blue there. I don't want to start making a mush out of it now because when it's like full, as I say, full of food, the stomach is full, <laughs> it can easily, you start working on it and you can easily start to mess it up. So it just becomes a, a mess. So, yeah. And uh, you're gonna lose everything. And that is a horrible feeling. So. some more in the brightest areas and yeah, it's a very nice line here and this one comes in there Adjust it a little bit because we're going too far. I want the shape of the flower to become as close to that as possible. It'll take a few layers, but hopefully, we'll get there. See, I put some, and there's light underneath there, that explains the color. And the light underneath there comes from here, and it's shot up, like that. Uh, and the same thing going down here. Yeah, I think I want to stop now and um, let it dry. Yeah, I think that is a good, better plan, as I say. Ah, there we go again. It is that thing, being able to tear myself away from it. It's always difficult. Uh, like this. Okay. 
Layer number two. I have 32. I have more even. I have a lot of. I have taken pictures of, kind of wild flowers that I've been picking. And uh, maybe I should make a whole exhibition. Just flowers. Pay down this studio. Some depth free. That would be something. Having a good economy is good for your peace of mind. So instead of using too much money, I will start. Do see more. Uh, I have such ambitions when it comes to huge paintings, big projects, and I, with the colors I use and the expenses, I need a bigger income, I think. I use old home paint and it's quite expensive paint also and I use a lot of paint so it's like I'm not a I'm not sitting there and counting the grams Okay, I'll, I'll leave it at this. Oh, I feel like I just don't feel like it. So, so when you get into it, it's so hard <laughs> to tear myself away because I'm starting to see all the nice things. I don't know when I do it at once, but that is not possible. So just fucking leave it. Leave it. <laughs> And that's this one. It goes down here. And this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put on some, it has dried for a while, and I'm going to put on some Reduché Fermis, Reduché Fermis, and uh, then my Lazour, and then I'm going to paint. Uh, Yeah, it's a mix between turpentine and uh, uh, Dharma or Harpix. It kind of dries quite quickly, brings out the colors so you can see better. And I also make my lazur stick better to the surface when I put the oil on, so I get some good start. Oops. And my 
hips are killing me today. I guess it's getting, getting used to that. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna do the basur. Actually, I usually wait for like 10, 15 minutes. Just as you know, I'm not gonna bother do that now. It's not that much I'm gonna put on anyway, because it's quite rough as it is. I'm just gonna go in and. I'm going to shake it off a little bit. I really like to shake it off before I start because it is almost like starting in a, a new painting and uh, it works good. So, yeah. We'll now we'll have to see the different uh, the different uh, brush strokes that comes out when I do it. Brush strokes is everything. into the color and I'll start painting so I don't need to add actually medium into the paint itself when I start and that's a good way of doing that I don't seem to find any good oh, I'm ruining that I should I must remember to treat my pencils better and every time I throw away a pencil it's actually money why money is stupid. Money is freedom. You have money, you have freedom. And freedom gives peace of mind. Money gives peace of mind. So you have to learn not to throw away money. And this one, this is the Da Vinci. You can find them online. And what I like with them is that they are squared. And they come in all sizes in the package. The small ones, tiny ones, these ones. So you can do all the different, uh, all the different um, pencils, pencil strokes. So, as usual, I start with the lightest point, and that is actually here. So, I can see that it has some yellow, and uh, it's blue and it's reddish, but I start with some white, and that's basically lemon yellow. Here, yeah, so it'll pop out a bit when I do that. And you see the squared the squared um, pencils uh, gives me this, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a feeling. Maybe somebody want to use round pencils, so you want to use uh, synthetic pencils. Then if you use synthetic pencils, you will get a more, I think it's a more dead surface without so much traces of from the painter. But somebody and somebody even prefer to use the sable pencils. I think that that is probably good on all the way in the end. When you put on the last lazuri, so maybe I'm gonna try that. Uh, I have stuck with these. I also used to 
actually use more of this scraping. I don't do that much anymore. It's almost like I have uh, found my my way in a way. I don't know. It's strange. For my brand. Uh, it's always crisscrossing. And um, now brush strokes is everything. It is where you see the artist, where the artist comes to, uh, really comes to fruition, or you can actually see him. You go to the masters and you can see the struggle intensity in every single brush strokes and um, if you learn you know, teach yourself to see these things you're gonna almost be able to it's almost like the artists are speaking to you through his pencils pencil strokes and it's really beautiful um, yeah so that is how I think. Now you see these lines here, this is just because it's a little bit different color. It's uh, more bluish. Uh, you know the yellow? Yellow and the uh, reddish violet uh, thing. Orange, blue, yellow, violet. Uh, it's all complementary colors kind of comes up against each other and that is what I'm looking for that's what I'm trying to, to emulate and create and work with it on the base of what nature will do and yeah Quit my point. my hips mm. the sound listen oh, that's my hips that's fucking crazy <laughs> uh, martial arts for many many years way too much training basically rotten from inside so sad, I was in such good shape. Still am, and my legs are gone. Yellow. Some yellow. And there's some green. I was trying to talk to my daughter about colors, and I showed her 
pointed to the walls behind lights and stuff and I tried to explain to her the colours I saw. She's actually making clothes, so gonna be a tailor or a clothes designer. And um, she wasn't able to see the colours I see. And it's so funny because you have to come to a certain point where you teach your brain to see all these colours. And a trained brain will see so many more colors. You see colors everywhere when you get used to, your brain get used to seeing them. But before that, you only see the bright colors, so the concrete colors. You don't really see all the things that are in between, all the colors that are in the shadows and, and everywhere. You can't, just can't see them. And I remember the first time I actually saw it. It's like it was in a Norwegian town called Stavanger. I was went to this drawing school, and I had this teacher, woman, Cecil Kobosta, and she was ex explained to me and taught me to see. And suddenly the whole world just turned to from nuances to color boom and i saw color everywhere and it's so strange how you are only observing so little if you don't train your eyes to see and it's always actually being able to see what's in the shadows because the bright colors are one thing, but it's actually the shadows are a mix between the complementary colors. Uh, so when you um, when you start to and that is and it's the shadows that brings the potency to the in my opinion anyway potency to the colors and give them the more vivid feeling. Uh, so that's why you have to practice. When you look at the cloud, remember to see, try to not see the cloud as uh, gray, try to observe not just the colors that are in the light areas, but also the colors that are in the dark areas. Usually it's, uh, it's in the blue and green and that specter. So, try to do that and you will see much more. Much, much more. Our world lights up. So, you know, probably said that a gazillion times in my videos by now. But I guess people aren't watching my whole videos at once, so they maybe just cut into them and see some parts of them or whatever and they might because I keep people who are actually tell me to watch all your videos and then they ask me something that I talked about a gazillion times in the videos and I ask myself didn't they listen? And that's why I make this video, so I don't have to explain to people. I like to explain, but, you know, it takes time. However, if you become a, pain, a patron, I will explain. Answer every question you ask me. So, if you want help to paint, that's the way to go. Become a patron.
I wondered if I'm gonna make some videos where I actually do slow motion and try to put in a soundtrack where I talk about these things while you see me doing these things in slow motion and maybe I should concentrate a little bit more so you actually see me do the more deeper concentrated work that I do when I go into deep flow that is also why I want to start streaming once in a while on YouTube because then I would just put on maybe John Rogan or something and listen to talk while I paint or some the problem is you can't really put on music on YouTube because they will demonetize your videos and stuff like that and that is really sad uh, because when you listen to music and paint uh, it really becomes definitely becomes more vivid more like a dance or intense feeling being in the moment yeah I'm actually gonna make a video of this breaststroke thing because I found this woman on YouTube talking about breaststrokes and I'm gonna make a video of in case it will last for about 45 minutes or something where she talks about the history of breaststrokes and I thought she had so many good points that I want to do some painting to that talk. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to do that as a separate video. Also, because there are some piano music in the background, that would actually maybe be a problem on YouTube. So I don't want to lose this whole video just because if I post a video with that music I may lose the whole video. So yeah. I will shape all this more. There's a different shape here, and so that is what I do. I just keep on piling on, and in the end, it will just come to be in a good way. Oh, my legs are hurting like ah oh, today. I really do need to operate because I. Almost can't walk anymore. It's horrible. Today has been really bad, so some days I don't feel any pain, much pain. But today it has been oh crazy. And it drains me, it affects my work, so oh gosh. Anyway, I'm gonna do the other thing and um uh, do that for an hour. So yeah, stay cool. <clears throat> so here we are. Doing some more painting on this. As you can see, I've done a little bit of work on it. Actually, made a video only about texture with this as a subject. So, uh, 
guess you've seen it already if you're a regular. <coughs> I'm just going to keep on rendering and uh, build and build and build. So we we'll start with a. It hasn't actually dried for that long, a day, but I sometimes when I have painted wet and wet, I can actually. Uh, if I hang it over an oven, of course not right on the oven because <laughs> you don't want it to catch fire. Uh, uh, over an uh, oven, right above, so it kind of heats up a little bit. It, the, the oil paint can actually dry pretty quick and uh, maybe in a day it's superficially dry like it's now I wouldn't put a retouche furnace on it because the white areas the highest ones would probably dissolve but you can actually uh, put on a new layer without it kind of spilling in spilling over into each other Today I, I need some glasses actually. Some days are better than others. I have become a little bit long sided, so I need to stand. <laughs> Far away from it, if I want to see all the details. I guess it came it comes with age. I'm 50 now. Uh, my eyesight has always been perfect, but becoming long sided is not that much of a problem. I mean, if you could stand like this, it would be worse, I think. And, uh, I check if maybe it's an operation I can do. Then again, it's my eyes. And, um, it's my my eyes is the blood of my life, so I wouldn't put them in any risk. I think I would if I should choose between being blind. Uh, and having my feet cut off, or sit in a wheelchair, uh, and lose my hearing. I would have chosen. Keep my sight. I mean, I can't really. I can't understand how I can live without my sight. Uh, it's now I couldn't paint, of course, but I could write and stuff. But a lot of things that I like to write but well, then again I had to learn myself to to uh, to the blind scripture or dictate or something anyway uh, my eyesight is very precious to me I guess it's precious to everyone just thinking about never seeing sons the song, I've never seen a uh, girl again. Or, <laughs> I mean, that would just be crazy. I guess we get used to everything. I mean, losing the eyesight is just unthinkable. Anyway, uh, 
And that is not just because I'm an artist, it's just because uh, I'm so visual. I'm extremely, uh, my eyes are just, just sitting around observing people going by or whatever, being in a moment. It's so important. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I say a lot of anyway. Um, it's funny, can't get over it. I do have serious issues with uh, the typical ADHD brain. Surreal. Um, I multitask all the time, and anything that can boost my dopamine, I get addicted to. It can be everything from TV series, it can be porn, it can be watching the news, it can be YouTube videos, it can be food, it can be training, it can be anything. But none of that actually puts my anxiety to ease. It just kind of, it's like taking a painkiller. But painting, painting does it in a totally different way. Also writing, writing, all that, all that training too is a positive thing, but it's limited to how much you can do of that. So, but the painting just levels out all the noise that is constantly bombarding my mind and uh, it's amazing that I'm not just standing here 24-7 despite this great effect, despite that it's the thing probably love the most next to my parents and my daughter and my brother maybe is so strange that I shouldn't be able to get into it easier more easy but that is also because it's quite painful because when you don't get it right really becomes frustrating. I remember a while ago I criticized in on Facebook, I just wrote about the Norwegian chess player, the world famous chess player. Well, I don't remember his name, Carlsen, so, yeah Carlsen. Uh, he is so grumpy when he loses and I said and I, I used to do competitions in karate and, and stuff like that. And I always met the competition and also a potential loss with um, a certain amount of carelessness. And I wrote that I thought it was like, like a spoiled child or something uh, being that grumpy because he couldn't he didn't win or didn't do a good job or the right strategies or whatever but then I thought about what I wrote then I thought fuck that is not right you know the training and the karate competitions and stuff like that didn't really mean that much to me. It didn't touch my whole being, as it said. But if I can't get this, a little thing right, like this, this one, I can't get this one right. Or a painting I can't get right, it really drives me crazy. 
So suddenly I empathized with him and sympathized with him because I know what he's going through. He's so into his chest that his chest is his lifeblood. And uh, becoming angry at yourself. It's natural if you have that that deep, deep feeling about what you do. People don't, that doesn't have that thing don't understand that kind of extreme passion. And they are also losing out of a lot of beautiful stuff about life, actually. So, I take it back, understand, perfectly. And when he did a good thing, he smiled from ear to ear and was happy again. Now, in chess or in sports, you will always meet someone that is better than you. And when I meet somebody who is better than me in painting, or I see someone, I, I don't get envious or angry or react with malice or so. I, I really appreciate good painting and good works. Uh, and my competition is this is with myself. So for Carlson this might become a bigger problem later because in, uh, in chess you have to be uh, the, the best or the best. Your brain has to be totally tip top to be on the level that he's playing on. And he will lose out sooner or later. And uh, that might be worse for him because the painting that will kind of evolve with my aging. Uh, the chess plane will probably become more and more difficult. In a different way, so he he has a hell of a ride in front of him. Um, and when something is who you are, as it probably is for him, it's not just a game; it is has become who he is. It will probably hurt a lot when he can't play on that level anymore. Anyway, the things I think about when I paint. Yeah. The things I think about in general, it's just crazy. My mind is on 24-7, there is never peace, there is never, except from when I do this, and uh, if anything I hope my, my videos can inspire people to go, not just to paint but to go even deeper into the painting because I see there's a lot of painters and a lot of people who likes to paint but they seem never to go deeper into texture deeper into the substance of of what painting is about they kind of try to uh, only do the motif 
and um, therefore most of the paintings I see, especially on both in art in general and on Facebook or Instagram, there is no deeper. Some some are, but there is no. People aren't going deep enough. They aren't. They aren't killing their darlings. They are. They are not going into that existential crisis thing. When they paint, they stop. After a good sketch. And they never go further. And there's a lot of good sketch artists out there who could become really good painters if they kept killing their darlings and demanding more of themselves. So, yeah. Give it substance, give it Give it the time it needs and substance it serves. So, yeah. Personally, I don't think I'm particularly good. So, I'm just talking about what I perceive as good. Uh, I'm awful. I can't really judge my own work in an objective sense. I will always put it down. Uh, yeah. And I maybe I should give myself more credit as a gallerist told me. David Cusson, Cusson, Cusson. Well, some, uh, there was a gallerist in one of the most famous galleries. I happened to walk in there and I, by accident, I got to talk to the guy because I asked the price of a painting and he came running out. And, and I used a, Uh, time to talk to him about showing my paintings and I thought uh, he thought them were very beautiful and also told me who are you um, if I got that question today I was just said uh, I don't know it's work in progress but I didn't remember that answer then and I just told him that that wouldn't matter if he actually took in my paintings to his gallery because he could make any artist good or bad into gold it wouldn't even matter if he could paint only thing that matters is the gallery's name, and you can say that's annoying, but that's how it is in the art world. The artist is not that important anymore. It is more the gallerist that is in the center. It's a sad fact, but that is where the money comes from. So, anyway, I was constantly, when I showed him my paintings, I was constantly kind of excuse, oh, this is not so good, it should be more like this or that, and blah, 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 and he said, hey, this is quite good painting, he said, and I shouldn't put myself down like that, because uh, if I do, people won't take me serious. And it's probably true, I should try to give myself a little bit more credit, it is not really, for me it's difficult, it is natural for me to brag about myself and I don't even think I'm that good so uh, I compare myself with the greatest artists in the world 
never lived and uh, any painter should in the light of all the great art, great paintings, just shut the fuck up and do their best. So, no. Yeah. But then again, I can see that my stuff has become quite subjective, quite personal. It is very much... My, my subjective stamp is now definitely in my paintings, good or bad, that is up to the person who see. As I did say to a person who said, oh, your paintings are like blah, 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 and I said, well, that is just your opinion, and uh, I know people who think the opposite thing, and Therefore, it's no, not more than a subjective truth. And... That's shut him up. Uh, yeah. Not that I need to shut people up, because... They want to tell me how horrible... My stuff is. There might be... Some truth in it, so... Be my guest, actually. Tell me what you think. No mind me. Okay, just gonna go up here. The thing with when I see the photo and there is that the digital camera do uh, interpret the photo and the painting in two different ways because the colors look more like each other when I see it in, in natural light and this can be quite annoying that I aren't able to to capture uh, the true colors but I guess I just have to try to live with it Anyway, I'm going to quit talking and keep painting. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to do some uh, start with... Um, I'm not going to put any lasso on this because it's come to a point where... Uh, maybe a little bit. Um, Maybe a little bit more red, reddish, because, and um, yeah, maybe a little bit of reddish some faces to get a warmer hue. But it's also green behind there, so it's kind of, no, uh, right there looks okay. Lights it <coughs> up a little bit. detail try to try to finish it today but go into more detail give it a more of a bang now I'm gonna shape the flower until now it's just been a sketch and we'll do more detail work and now it's where this thing is getting difficult, as usual.
it all silent because <laughs> that was strange. I fell into thoughts about something that happened today. But that's okay. That's usually how it sounds like when I don't have music on and I paint. It's just silence. And my head is just wandering off to strange places. The problem is that I don't want to risk it kind of stiffening up. So it is actually a little bit difficult. But more light here, side light. And the store upstairs is making that sound every morning. And usually I funny. I've been working with these paintings now for quite a lot the last days and I start to get this connection back with my inner self. Restlessness goes away, you just calm down. You find that beautiful flow. This is a better pencil for this work, actually. I should have gone down and bought new pencils because they're kind of a little bit rusty at this point. These ones. But I haven't got time, and there's so much snow outside. It's just as Walk around that fucking snow. I hate snow. Then again, in Norway, we actually feel the difference between summer and winter, or in Oslo, anyway. Where I come from, there's a basically a constant fall, a constant autumn, with some good days. See, this is a kind of a... It is um, leaves that I just put on the wall. <sighs> I'm getting tired. should get some sleep. Go to the gym tomorrow. Strength training, stretching. It's very important for me to exercise to keep some equilibrium, balance. It's very important, actually. I have 30 different paintings like this, and I do think I'm going to do all of them. They are kind of widescreen, and I would like to do all of them, or most of them, and paint these until I really, really, really get it right. Because this is the kind of work that just brings you Deep, deep, deep. You have to, so much detail, so much happening. I just have to drag the 
colors together. First I put on white and then I start kind of dragging the colors like this. totally bitching on just take it away take it away that was a wrong color it has to be totally yellow there but a lot of whites inside there and then that was even too much color that is the point with this um, yeah the colors are so close together it's almost impossible to see this line there. It's actually between the um, violet or reddish bluish violet and the yellow. Kind of like this. Now you see how I do it. I drag it like this and then I drag it down. Then I will start adding some white. And we'll drag it down there so these two surfaces meet at some point.
Mm. Anyway, well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. See how the thing underneath gives more substance to the thing that comes on top. And this is what happens every time you touch it. There's some way we shouldn't stop until kind of way you want it. I noticed that with the small ones, the apple and the red onion, the dead one, that I um, just painted. Um, and I thought I should just give it up. But the trick is to calm down and accept that you fail, accept that you lose control, that you do too much, and that you sometimes have to use more of your time on a piece to kind of get the right, right thing, the thing you're after. Um, the subtleness and the Right now, my legs actually hurts, so I'm going to go to bed and work on this piece tomorrow. I think it's starting to take a little bit of shape. That's a good thing. We get that shadow. The shadow explains a lot. But it was green in it because it's reddish over there, so it has to be as green. That's cool. Okay. <clears throat> so, here you can see, I have done some, definitely some progress. And, um, yeah, I am doing, um, kind of in the, in the, now in the, stage where I started to go deeper, started to um, get a grip on the details. I also 
uh, started to build the textures around the flower. As you can see, it's starting to you know, build that um, brick wall feeling that I'm after. So yeah, I think it's starting to become quite nice actually. It's a lot of work, but I was, this, yeah, we'll see. Just kind of gratitude. Um, yeah.
Okay. <laughs> Gee, I fell out of it. I just float away. Became all silent. That must be. I could hear myself thinking. That is how how it is. I just went into a, that timeless zone. Uh, and it's so great because when I do all these different directions and I build all these, it's kind of an impressionist kind of way to do it. But it's become so, I can see it's almost like music. My brain is just beaming of pleasure. It's so pleasurable. And I've felt the last days now because I've been painting a lot and um, how I just, just totally elite brain. It's just, oh, I can't explain how great it is to, so. I look forward now to finish off these Patreon pictures and um, get into the big paintings again, um, the figure paintings and I have some landscapes I'm going to do from Freedom Tower in New York, I have some um, kind of tree thing, impressionist stuff with a lot of light and colour and uh, it's gonna be great. I just look so forward to the feeling that I get when I do these things. I've been a little bit stressed now because I've been making many, you know, catching up with work. I had some kind of a little bad time now during Christmas because I had a lot of pain. But the pain is basically it's not that much, well, it's not gone, but it's, it's uh, at least not that, that painful, you know, my hips. So, um, I've been doing some weight loss and adjustments in the food and try to let myself restitute. You can hear? Listen. Yeah, there it is. That was my hip. So, <laughs> you can twist it and it says. So it's all the martial arts for many, many years. And But then again, I burn my hips in both ends and they gave a lovely light. Is that what I say? Anyway, you saw what I was doing. I was building texture and just going back and forth and and it becomes more and more, it comes more and more alive. The more you overpaint, the more you go back and forth and back and forth, and just adding subjective matter. That's actually what I do. I just adding my subjectivity more and more into, into the painting. And so it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, yeah. And you also need to go into that deep flow to be able to do these things. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put in some some light there before I stop the <coughs> my. I am totally out of sync when it comes to daytime, nighttime now. And, uh, I think I've been awake for, I don't know, for a very long time. I'm painting and become hyperactive because I am a little bit high, hyperactive. So when I really, really get into the painting, ooh, I just like, I never want to stop because it's like being on a dance floor, it's like, yeah, it's great. My brain sings. It's the best thing. It's kind of the, the feeling I could picture myself. If you should have an eternal life or something, you have to be in that deep flow feeling where you are, are totally in the moment all the time and uh, yeah 
So, hmm. it's beautiful. It's a beautiful life. I'm so lucky to live in a country and be born in a country where I can actually make a living from putting paint on the canvas. It's such a privileged life. It's it's uh, amazing. While well, most other people in the world are struggling to get food in their bellies, it's, it's not fair. Anyway, some uh, discussion. You see here, I just mix it right in. And then I do some yellow, greenish, and I damp it down again. And all these things are kind of, it's almost like a, making a carpet, you know, with all the knots. And you just keep adding knots and keep it, yeah, and then in, after a while you get this picture. And uh, yeah, that's how it sometimes feels like that. I'm knitting, I'm knitting a carpet of kind of a carpet of brush strokes and subjective subjective um, uh, touches and I, yeah. see a shadow there and a fall there and I'm going to do a little bit of orange on this side because there's a light coming in there lift it up a little bit so, and there's some green. So it's kind of a microcosm of of um, different um, colors. See what I mean? It's a leaf kind of hanging on. And it's white there. So now it's more rational that it hits a shadow down there. Anyway, <clears throat> see you later. Okay, 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 okay. I am working with uh, some very some of the details in the flower <clears throat> and uh, kind of stuck actually for some reason it's always like this I am now working with very detailed stuff so for some reason these patron paintings becomes more personal to me. Uh, not more personal, but I, I feel more anxiety about getting them really good because I feel I owe people something when uh, they pay me on patron. So, maybe it wasn't such a good idea <laughs> to start with Patreon. I don't know. I will continue doing it. So, it's growing also. And it forces me to push my skill wall and to meet this anxiety about my own skills and what's good and what's bad. Uh, and that's a good thing, in a way. So it's, it's in a way, a double-edged sword. In a way, it creates a little bit of stress. But then again, it can be a good stress. Um, it's also quite hard to find the right 
hues and the right colors um, doing this because the nuances here are very very small actually like when I do these here how dark is it really how light is it how to get that nice smooth uh, transition in the nuances from the light to the darker without losing shape without losing the aesthetics of it it's not easy believe me Just try to find the right I'll find better pencil. I actually like to use these more because they're giving I'm sometimes tempted to use the more synthetic ones because they give kind of a flatter surface. And then when I do that for a while, I can see that the surfaces becomes too rigid and too dead. So then I have to go in again with the bristle and um, shake it up to get more life into it. It's very bright. It's kind of not burned out, but it is. It is almost at that level. So I just have to increase the light areas and kind of keep the areas in between darker and go kind of all the way up as far as I can, and then all over the place and then go over the widest of the white again after without going out over the other things so you get this lift on only the most the brightest things um,
let me see what I'm doing. So I need some light underneath there. As a contrast to the darker areas under there. And it's in the more reddish uh, violets. Spectre gives some some substance to the background. Then again, it mustn't be too much because it takes over from this. And of course, we don't want that. There is some blue. So some more damn time. Mm, it's the wrong color. Uh. I've been staying home all weekend, just painting, and it's feel and feels actually fine. It's a lot of snow outside. It's in the middle of winter. I really don't see the point in going out and tumbling around in the fucking snow. I really hate snow. So annoying. I don't even like to ski, so I don't think I ever did. It was kind of a duty when you were a kid. Oh it's snow, you have to ski. Oh. Yeah. It's not me for some reason. That was totally wrong. I just fucked it up. Getting tired of this shit, to be honest, because I don't seem to be able to get anywhere. Anyway. this part here and some reddish in it I also think I have to do something with our light in the studio because it tend to be quite f the light is quite flat so I have problems seeing the many of the nuances So many details, so many different colors. There's a green and there's blue and there's so many. So you just have to kind of keep working with it almost like a um, almost like watercolor. In a way, why do I always say that? I'm so tired of it. In a way, or as if. No, 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 no. Not as if. 
here. There's some nice detail. Some lights coming here. Exactly on. There's some plaster and there's some old. So that's wood with some some um, paint over. And then you have plaster and you have some yeah different things. The mixed old thing. Anyway, I'm gonna just keep on working on it and then I'm gonna film one more time when I'm almost done. So yeah. Cool. So there we are. Okay. I am gonna try to finish this beauty off today. I hope I'm gonna be able to. I don't start fucking up again. And I need to really concentrate. It's just some small, I need to get these nice um, lines right. Sadly, I need glasses and a kind of I think I maybe I'm doing an operation. I'm a little bit scared of actually doing an operation on my eyes. I'm not not many things that I'm actually scared of, but complications. Something with an eyesight operation would be a catastrophe. It is just plus one, so it's not much, but it's enough to disturb the painting a little bit. So, it's actually a little bit annoying. See, I'm okay. Now I'm just trying to build more vivid light source and um, I'm going to take it very slowly so I don't screw it up Just drag it down. It's been a struggle this one. Um, everything has been a struggle lately actually. I think it was because I had and I had some, I've had a lot of pain, so I was tired and I didn't get that much done and I get stressed and kind of just, because I only get stressed if I don't get enough done. Also the painting for me is um, what gives me a sense of purpose in, in life. I would take no pleasure in sitting around eating pizza all day and watching television, laying in bed and watch 
Netflix until my eyeballs fell out. It just leads me into deep depression. Not deep, but leads me into feeling that life is not really worth living. I have to be active, I have to be in a moment, I have to find that flow which this painting stuff gives me. It gives me a kind of... Oh, the more I paint, if I could stay in here for 12 hours a day and go just go to the gym, maybe a short walk to a cafe, have a cup of coffee, read the news, go back to work, meet some friends a few hours in the weekends and stuff like that, I would actually be content. I don't need much, I don't need the high, extreme highs or... This is the extreme high for me, creating something, doing something, building something. And, uh, yeah, it's strange to see how the entertainment industry almost destroying humanity by just telling you that the most important thing you can do is to not miss the last episode of some TV series or that actually is made to addict you to, to the screen. And um, it's sad, really. The human condition in that matter is sad because there's so much potential in all, all of us. Every single human being on the planet has basically, on average, the same potential. Of course, there are genetic variations between humans, but in some are more extrovert and some are more introvert, and some are alpha males and some are beta, or beta woman, beta man. But no matter what type of person you are, your potential is on average the same and everyone can be good become good and most things is they if they put their mind to it and that is why the entertainment industry and all this are just destroying this potential I notice it myself it's so easy to be hooked I mean I was watching most of all the season until now I stopped because it's so bad. I was watching even, even watching The Walking Dead. And for the last three seasons, I just felt it was such bullshit. I could actually make a video about how much I hated that show. Because it was so pathetic. Even the way they use their ammunition start to annoy me. I mean, it's not because of the... It's ridiculous. Walking Dead. I mean... <laughs> I enjoy, actually, immensely. Um, Game of Thrones. But that is because it's a good show. It's well written and well done. The Walking Dead was just... No, totally lost it. Both in the filming and the way they... It's just horrible. Anyway. You're sitting around throwing away your life on that. It's just ridiculous. Most people in the world, kids, young kids, have to work for pocket change until the back breaks while we are sitting here destroying our lives with ridiculous entertainment 
and uh, TV shows and sports and all things that make make us into basically machines for the entertainment industry. It's no wonder that we are depressed. Anyway, this this thing, this basically insignificant insignificant painting gives me a sense of a sense of um, meaning and for the people who buy it or in this case win it on Patreon they get a piece of me a piece of my struggle So, and that makes it even more important to me that it's a good piece of work, that it is not a bad thing, it's not a, yeah, that's a good piece of work. Yeah, it's starting to get old. Yeah. Anyway, that was another of my rants. I was actually going to talk about painting. And I'm going to do some videos soon. Shorter videos where I only focus about the painting. Because that way I will also reach a larger audience because I mean when I talk about life and stuff and things that I like this people most people aren't so interested in that and that's why um, maybe that's why I don't have that many views on YouTube also painted Muhammad, so that had been help. I was shadow banned at least for a while, so uh, I didn't know that Google were uh, censoring political news. So but they actually do so but it's it's growing slowly. See what I'm doing. I mean, if you if you go and look at the big master, the great masters, and you already understand the value of textures and stuff, you can really learn from it because the secret to painting is in textures and directions and yeah, it is not the motif. Forget about that. It is in how it was painted, not why it was painted. Why it was painted is usually because the painter enjoyed painting, or maybe he just needed the money but enjoyed painting it anyway. Maybe he didn't even enjoy it but tried his best anyway. You know, you but anyway, you will see, you will see the painter in the paint, not in the motif. Yeah, I will stop filming. And uh, film a little bit more later. Okay.
Okay, here we are. I'm just going to do our last touch up on the brightest areas. Um, just like uh, do some lining. So just to hound some some of the bright spots to give it a little bit more shall we say uh, sculptural feel to it. I think I've become quite nice. It has been also a struggle. I talk about a lot of struggle lately because I have been struggling with these paintings. Uh, I did have a lot of pain. It's better now. So I couldn't really get into that flow for a while and, and it affected my my abilities my skills a little bit. So I when I really got into it again I fumbled a lot. So but now I can feel that it's coming back to me. Uh, I can feel that it's almost like you know if you have played a lot of chess and then you suddenly don't play that much chess and you get you start up again and you fumble in the beginning you can't really but it also it's like cycling or sex in a way when you get into it again it's CC to get back into it you see now I just give it a little bit a little push Careful. I, I took it actually out from where I'm drying and I saw suddenly that wow it's actually quite nice. It's kind of very painted because I've been struggling mildly with it but it has become as I say very painted and very a lot of textures and stuff in it and I think I had some some good things in it if I was a tattooist this would be called touch up
south. This kind of a never-ending story, these paintings, because there's always a step more. You can always, always, in a way, take it another step. I have a lot of these, these photos of flowers, and I'm going to do some more of them, and see if I can actually evolve my skills a little bit by doing it. Because I usually get a little bit better every time I do something. And I do feel it became nice, but I also reach, I notice I reached some skill wall when it comes to um, the subtle transitions from, from shadow to light when it becomes so extreme neons I get into trouble and I have to work more with this because if you can do these kind of detail or this kind of um, very subtle nuances I think you can actually do more contrast things even more easy so it's a good way to train your brain and uh, yeah Keep it open so it doesn't become drawn. But it's also a horrible thing when things become too drawn. And of course, as a painter, you are usually the only one who actually see it. Because people don't see what you, you see, they see the finished result and they will always think that that it was where the artist intended to finish which I, unless it's a more artist type that is more sketchy like one layer paintings uh, then it might be true but for me that there is no actually end to it Oops. There is no end to how many layers I can actually put on and how much time I can use on one painting. So, yeah. So. Actually, I think this will do. Patrons are getting a lot of my hard work for the five dollars they spend if they win it. So here's no faking, there's no cheap tricks or U-turn or anything like that. 
it is total passion, total submission to getting it right, at least as right as possible. so tempting to just keep on rolling. There might be a better way to paint these paintings. Maybe I should start out a little bit more careful because of the that the nuances are so similar. That might be a good idea. Everything here is almost like an aquarelle-ish feel to it. I need a little bit more light in the middle there. Some yellow, kind of bright yellow. So some in here. Yeah, I think that was nice. Mm -hmm. um, let's go and see how this Now suddenly these became too drawn because I, I, yeah, so I had to do something with that to make it more fluid. Also this one. And that is the trap actually, sometimes you go into, I think you're finished and then there's always this next thing and the next thing and the next thing and suddenly you have been standing there for 10 hours going back and forth with the same things over and over and over again. And it just keep driving you absolutely crazy. <laughs> the thing is with me, I never actually learned how to paint. I taught myself how to paint through basically failures and failing so I 
I never actually know exactly how I do it. I kind of just start and then I do it until I kind of reach that point where I start to accept it as finished. And it's always hard to figure out when. Ah, way too drawn. Damn. That's such a bitch. Shake it up a little bit with the background. Just and shake it up. Just have to let it kind of slide into one another. Move the lines. So oh, that's a more subtle. So now it's starting to more glide in. So Yeah, it was better, but it's too, still a little bit too drawn. So I will keep on painting a little bit and then I film it for you when it's over. When the struggle is... Okay, <clears throat> I think I'm finished with it. And, uh, yeah. I actually do think I'm finished, basically. I'm gonna yeah. It's such small things that kind of makes or break it that it is. Um, can actually really take it all on a person. 
so small nuances that the side Very difficult. From sketch to this, it's quite fun to think about how fast I do the sketch and in the end how extremely time consuming this is. I should not touch it. So, I think, maybe. So, I think, I hope, more of it, shut out here, but it takes nothing for it, since everything is so extremely white. It's nothing, basically nothing, to feel that is drawn instead of painted. So, yeah. A different pencil. nice on the distance now. Uh. So, let's do this light right there. Oh. 
to be more elusive Yeah, there was. So, that was it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here it is. And I hope you like it. I sure think that I hit some jackpots in this big cream quite nice and uh, hopefully it will make a lucky patreon happy <laughs> stay cool until